Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you'll take them out and turn with me to John, the 15th chapter. Thank you, worship team, for your ministry today. John, the 15th chapter is... uh, where we're going to go. Aren't you glad today that we serve a God of joy? Can you say amen to that? He's a God of joy. Thank you, Phil. He's a God of hope. He's a God of peace. He is our God. He is our rock and our refuge, our strength, our helper, and our deliverer. And I'm glad of that because the truth is you and I are going to have to face some difficult things in this life. There are going to be some times even in the midst of the difficulties. I'm sure you can relate. I've been there and I'm sure you have. There's times where just we kind of feel like giving up and giving in and waving the white flag of surrender and saying, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of, of fighting the battles. I'm tired of pressing on. And times when it seems like, you know, that the, the trial is so big that we just can't handle it. Truth is, you and I, friends, cannot stop the trials. We can't circumvent them. But I would tell you today, the world is facing trials. The world is facing difficulty. The world is facing very difficult times. But there's something today, friend, that you and I as believers in Jesus Christ have that the world doesn't have. You and I have been promised something that will carry us through the difficult valleys. It will strengthen us when we feel weak. It will help you and I to keep putting one, one foot in front of the other and pressing on. The book of Nehemiah, we find there the story of the, uh, the Israelites coming back to Jerusalem and rebuilding the wall in Jerusalem. It was not an easy task that they were given. In fact, in the book of Nehemiah, we find their story there. And the Bible says it was such a fierce, difficult time that while the people who had come back to rebuild the city, while they're laying the brick, the Bible says they would work with one hand and the men would lay the brick to rebuild the wall with one hand, but in their other hand, they had a sword. While they were doing the work and while they were living life and while they were doing the things that God had for them to do, they had a sword in the other hand. While they were busy laboring, there was a fight on their hands. Friend, you and I, you and I may, while we're trying to build marriages and while we're trying to build families and while we're trying to do the work of the kingdom of God, we may find ourselves in the midst of a fierce battle. But today I would encourage you with the words that Nehemiah encouraged these people with. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, he said to them, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You may be in a fierce battle today, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. You may feel like you can't go on, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. You may feel like you don't have enough answers, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Bible says outwardly we may be wasting away, but inwardly we're renewed day by day because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy. Friend, there's nothing in this world that can bring true joy to your heart. When you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, the world has nothing that can defeat the spirit of discouragement, nothing that can counter sadness and loneliness. I can tell you that there will be times, friend, that you and I may have tears because of the battles that we face. Psalm 30 and verse 5 says this, weeping may endure for the night. You ever had some nights where weeping was enduring? Seasons of your life where it seemed like weeping, all you could do was cry. All you could do is just uh, fall down before God. But the Bible says weeping may endure for the night, but joy, somebody say joy. 
but joy comes in the morning. The Bible says his mercies are fresh and new every day. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto us. Friend, joy has the power to overtake the spirit of discouragement. Joy has the power to conquer depression and despondency. Joy has the power to give you something stable to stand on when the storms are raging about you. Joy can give you hope when there's no hope around you. Joy can bring you through the darkest night. It will bring you through the valley. And friend, it will see you over to the other side. Notice the words of the psalmist. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm not stopping. I'm not going to be defeated in the valley. I'm coming through the valley. And it's because the joy of the Lord is my strength. But I have to tell you something, friend. Joy is only found in Jesus Christ. Joy is only found in Jesus Christ. Happiness on the happiness can be found on this earth. But it's very temporary. Happiness can be found, but friend, it's only going to be for a moment. Happiness is temporary. It's based on the external things of my life. But joy, on the other hand, joy is on the inside of me. Joy comes from within. You see, all the things that try to make you happy are out here. Joy will come from in here. Mm. When you get pressed in, happiness will go running, but joy will come to the surface. When he comes in like a flood, joy will come out. Joy will come flowing forth because joy is on the inside of us. Joy is supernatural delight. It's found in God. It's supernatural because it comes from God. Joy is eternal. Because it's based on a relationship. That's what I like. Happiness will leave you. Joy will linger. Joy is eternal because it's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus? He is the source of all joy. He's the source of all joy. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I promise you I'm going to get you out at a decent hour here. I won't hold you till supper. I promise. But we've got to read this passage because if we don't read the passage, you'll miss the entire point of today. As we read through this passage in John chapter 15, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. Here's what I want you to closely pay attention to. All of the times, in fact, some of you may want to underline it in your Bible or highlight it with your electronic device. All the times that it says, remain in me. These are Jesus' words to us. John chapter 15 and verse 1, he says, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Let me tell you, that's a strong statement right there, friends. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No, bear, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. How many of you know God gets glory when we bear fruit? This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit Notice this, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy 
will be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now, in the last few weeks as we've walked through the scriptures together, we found that the key to living this life is found in joy. And then we found last week that the key to joy then is in bearing fruit as a believer. Now, we talked about several areas, and uh, it was not an exhaustive list, but we talked about the fruit of personal wholeness. We talked about the fruit of godly character. We talked about the fruit of good works. We talked about the fruit of sacrificial praise. And last of all, from Matthew 3 and 8, we talked about the fruit uh, that comes from repentance. Our lives as believers, we are to bear fruit. Our lives as Christians, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Friend, when you and I come to a relationship with Jesus Christ, there is a transformation. I mean, it, it, it's the difference between daylight and dark. You and I are changed because of Jesus Christ. As a result of that change, there is fruit that's going to come from our lives. And this morning, what I want to do, that's where we uh, were up to last week. We talked about the key to joy was bearing fruit. This morning, I want to continue on. The key to bearing fruit is remaining or abiding in Jesus. Now, we know we want joy, and we know that joy comes as we bear the fruit of Jesus Christ in our lives. We, we get off of the fence, and, and we, uh, in determination, we live for Jesus Christ, and there's a fruit that comes as a result of that. But now the key to bearing the fruit comes by remaining or abiding in Jesus. We see this truth again and again throughout this text. Verse 4, verse 5, verse 6, 7, 9, and 10. He says, remain in me. Now, the word remain in this passage means to sojourn. It means not to depart. It means to stay close, to remain as one, uh, not to become separated. It's giving us the picture of leaning in and leaning on Jesus Christ to stay close to Jesus. The Bible conveys this truth throughout the New Testament when he says that I may be found in him. And we are exhorted and encouraged to walk with Christ and to fellowship with Christ and be one with Christ. And the Apostle Paul said that I may know him. What Jesus is saying in this passage and the word he's trying to get us to come to an understanding of if we want to bear fruit is this true Jesus is saying here you can't bear fruit unless you abide in me it's not a state of mind it's not a determination of your will nor your emotions this is not something that you wake up one day and say you know what I think today I'm going to start bearing the fruit of Jesus Christ now, the truth is we all want to bear fruit. That's why you're here today. You got up this morning. You drove into this place. You got in your car. You arrived here. You came in. We worshiped the Lord, and we spent time in his presence praying and being with him. I believe you're here today because you want to grow in your walk with Jesus. You want to live for Jesus. You don't want to be a Christian in title only, but you want Jesus to be exemplified in your life. That's why you're here. Now, we try to bear fruit that declares that we're connected to the vine. As we began this series and we've been walking through this, there's been some decisions made. I said, I'm going to bear the fruit of Jesus Christ in my life. I'm going to be a greater example of Christ to those around me. And I commend you today for that desire. I commend you for that prayer of your heart. I commend you today for uh, setting forth that direction for your life. But let me tell you, here's where the difficulty comes in when we began to make those statements. The difficulty is this. Apart from Jesus, you and I cannot bear fruit. 
It's not a decision of my will that enables me to bear the fruit. I bear fruit as I remain and stay connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. Let me put it to you this way. Instead of focusing on trying to bear fruit, we rather should focus on remaining and abiding in him. You see, the life of the Christian comes from Jesus. Now, the truth is, this is not like a decision to, uh, how many of y'all in this place, you'll be, I, I know it's in church, but you can't lie because you're in church. How many of y'all have ever made the decision you were going to lose weight? Lift your hand. Come on now. Some of y'all are, yeah, 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 yeah. We made that decision, haven't we? Have you ever noticed, I don't know what happens in the realm around you, but have you ever noticed that the day you decide, today's the day I'm starting a new diet. It's the day you wake up half starved to death. <laughs> and as you are half starved to death, you think I am determined, I'm going to stick through this. I think I'm dying right now, but I'm going to make it through this. And you get to work, and I don't know what's happened in the people you work with, but everybody has brought in chocolate cake. And that's the day they chose to bring in chocolate muffins. And they brought in chocolate pies. And they brought in anything that has to do with chocolate, they brought it in. And you're sitting in your little cubicle or you're standing on the line or wherever your job may be. And everybody else, they're all over there laughing and they're having fun. And somebody says, you know what? I love it so much. I'm going to take two pieces of this today. And you're sitting there and you're going, this can't be happening to me. Why, Lord, would you allow this to happen to me? <laughs> it's difficult. And, and let me tell you, here's what happens. You do pretty good for the first hour, maybe two hours. And then this little thought comes in your head that says, you know what? I could have a small piece. <laughs> and a small piece wouldn't really make that much difference. And you know what? It's not long till the small piece turned into a full piece. And it's not long till the full piece turned into two pieces. And you get home at the end of the day, and your spouse walks in the house. They say, how'd it go today? And you're just like, I don't even want to talk about it. Don't even want to talk about it. And we get the feeling that, man, I have failed. Why does that happen? It's because that's a decision I made with my mind. It was a mental decision I made. We try to carry that same process over when it comes to bearing the fruit of Jesus Christ in our lives. Well, I made the decision today, I'm going to be more like Jesus. Honey, if you make that decision, I promise you somebody's going to challenge it right off the bat. If you're trying to bear fruit by a state of mind, you're going to find yourself frustrated. You're going to find yourself aggravated. You're going to seem like you are a failure on a regular basis because you're trying to do something of a spiritual nature with your natural mind. Now, the truth is, I didn't ask you how many of you succeeded at losing the weight. I asked you how many of you set out to lose weight. Jesus gives us some great, great insight. He says, listen, boys, you can't do it without me. Apart from me, he even says, with apart from me, you can do nothing. If I don't stay connected to the vine, I utterly fail. For many of us, I don't think we've settled this in our heart. And until you do settle in your heart, friend, you're going to keep trying, and you're going to keep trying, and you're going to keep trying to do what's right, and you'll only find out the more you try, the more it doesn't work. Bearing fruit is only found in walking close to Jesus. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, I'm trying to be a better Christian. I'm trying to do the things I'm supposed to do. Friend, the problem is that success is not found in us. Success is found in him. Jesus is the Christian life. Jesus is the characteristic. Jesus is the fruit that is to be exemplified 
in my life. Remember uh, Galatians 5 and 22, we talked about last week. It says, the fruit of the Spirit. It's about staying rooted and connected to Jesus. And when I remain connected to Jesus, his essence, his character begins to flow in me. He is the joy. He is the peace. He is the love. He is the compassion. He is the fruit, the fruit that comes from the vine. Now, a lot of mornings when... uh, when Paul and I leave the house and we're on our way to the office in the mornings, a lot of times we'll stop by the subway here in Gas City down at the Quick Mart. And a lot of times we'll run in and grab something to eat or just grab something to drink. And, you know, we're just kind of in and out. It's, it's not a let's stop and, and linger here for a while. We just kind of run in, get it. And there's been days, I'm not kidding you, I have gotten out of the car and uh, Paul has done the same thing. You, you get out of the car, you run, you go right to where the drinks are at, you go to the cash register, nobody's in line, you pay for it, and right out the door. My wife, she can buy the most wonderful perfume you've ever found in your life. And that morning, she can put that perfume on. And man, it smells so good. And we get in the car and you can, man, that perfume just fills the car. And we can pull up to the Quick Mart, and she'll get out, and she'll go into the Quick Mart to get her something to drink. She'll come back out with a sweet tea. And when she gets in the car, every bit of that wonderful perfume she had on was gone, and now she smells like Subway. (laughs) If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. You come out smelling like a loaf of bread. Every bit of that water perfume, it's all gone, and you smell like Subway. Why does that happen? Because you see, in there, they're baking bread. And the essence of the smell of that bread fills that place. When I come out, or she comes out, we smell like that bread because we've been where the essence of the bread is. Listen, friend, if you'll get with Jesus and you'll abide in Jesus, you won't have to try to bear the fruit. It'll just come naturally because you've been with him and what's in him now begins to work through you. John 15 and verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me. I see so many folks that are struggling. So many folks that are frustrated. I see them feeling like they have failed in the task. Feeling like I'm never going to get this thing down. I'm never going to be able to do this. Because they're trying without abiding. Now, you see, when I was a kid, I used to go to my grandma and grandpa's house. And when I was a kid, I didn't know, I didn't know the, the full realm of the story, but there was a man who lived across the alley from my grandparents. His name was Mr. Blackburn. What I didn't know, many of you that know Ginger, right, that was Ginger's grandpa. And when we were kids, my sister and I, we'd go across the alley to Mr. Blackburn's house, and he had grapes. Oh, they were so good. I remember my grandma, she'd give us this little box. It was about this big, and she'd say, okay, now you can go over and get some grapes, but don't get them all. And so what we'd do is we'd go over, and we'd pick off a grape and put it in the little box, and then we'd pick off a grape and eat it. And then we'd pick another one, put it in the box, then we'd pick another one, we'd eat it. And we'd stand there, and we'd eat those Concord grapes, too. We were so packed full of Concord grapes. They were so good. But I have to tell you, I never remember a time walking by Mr. Blackburn's grapes that I ever heard the grapevine frustrated. I never heard the grapevine, oh, they're going, I can't bear grapes. Actually, it was a very quiet place. It was a very tranquil place. Actually, you just walk up. Jesus, give me the words. 
When I'd walk up, my attention wasn't on the vine. I would see the branches, and the branches had the fruit on them. Jesus said he is the vine. We are the branches. And he said, if you'll stay connected to me, you'll bear much fruit. There's no frustration in bearing fruit. Actually, bearing fruit is really easy. We've made it hard. We've put in the factor of us. Jesus said, it don't have anything to do with you. You just stay with me. You just stay connected to me. You stay connected to me, and I'll make the fruit work out of your life. If you've ever been around an apple tree, there's no frustration in the apple orchard. They just simply, what does it do? It's an apple tree. It bears fruit. It's, a, it's, it's in God's design. It's not hard. It's not hard. Let me tell you, though, it becomes very hard when the branch gets disconnected from the vine. Because if you've ever been around an apple tree, and you find that one of the branches has gotten broken, you find that the leaves start withering, don't they? They turn brown, and they begin to die, and they begin to fall off. And, and all the other branches may have nice, beautiful uh, fruit hanging from the branches, but this one that's, that's separated is dying. Why? Because no other reason then it's not connected to the vine anymore. Friend, you're never going to be able to do this thing of Christianity if you're trying to do it on your own without Jesus. If you're trying to make, if, you're, if you have that same mentality, I'm going to be a good Christian, you're going to find yourself frustrated. Instead of focusing on bearing fruit, Put all your energy into abiding and remaining connected to the vine. The frustration will leave you. You won't have to work because you see what's inside is what will work its way out. My wife used to say when, when the stresses of life squeeze in on you, what is it that comes out? Is it the essence of us? Or is it the essence of Jesus? Friend, when you stay connected to the vine, when life presses on you, the essence of the vine is what will come out. Hmm. There's more there than we have time to even delve into right now. He said, if you will remain in, Notice this, if you'll remain in me, we're always waiting on him to remain in us. If you remain in me, he said, then I'll remain in you and you will bear much fruit apart from me, separated from me, trying to do it without me. He said, you can do nothing. And so, I know the balance for those of you that are here and in your mind, while I'm talking, you're wrestling in your mind and you're saying, yeah, but last week we talked about good works and there's things that I need to do. Absolutely. We're not talking about that today. Push that out. What I want you to get today is the words of Jesus. Have you ever noticed that a parent will repeat themselves to make sure their kids get what they're trying to say? A wife does the same thing to her husband. Any husbands ever not been listening? Come on, guys. Any wives that your husband wasn't listening? Yeah, amen. Revival's coming now. It's kind of like we're husband and we're here. We hear it. Y'all ever watch Charlotte Brown? And the adults in Charlotte Brown, what is it? Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Sometimes we're hearing, but we're not hearing. Isn't it 
amazing how Jesus in just these 11 verses again and again and again, it's kind of like the disciples weren't getting the point. And I would submit to you, sometimes we're not getting the point. He says, remain in me, and I'll remain in you. Remain in me, for apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Remain in me, abide with me again and again and again and again. He says, if you try to do it without me, you can do nothing. You must remain in me. If you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. Friends, I submit to you today, stop striving to bear fruit and just remain in him I pray that God will bring peace to your life the striving will cease remember when I told you about Subway I thought to myself if I can run quicker through Subway I won't smell so much like Subway it never happens I'm not kidding. I don't know what is in that stuff, but I'm telling you, it will latch hold of you. And you get out in the car, and you're just like, you smell like Subway. I promise you, if you get around Jesus, and you remain in Jesus, you won't have to worry about the essence of Jesus the essence of Jesus will be with you as you're remaining in Jesus. Then listen, the good works will come. The characteristics will come. The things we talked about last week, the fruit will come automatically. Why? Because it's connected to the source. Lord, may you help us. May you help us. Help us, Lord, to remain in you, get connected to the source. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you know our desire. You know the, uh, the passion of our heart, Jesus, is to be like you. And, Lord, in this world we live in, we, Lord, we want that when we go to the workplace or we go home or we go to the marketplace, wherever life takes us, Lord, we want, we want there to be good fruit that comes from our life. But, Father, often we find ourselves frustrated and feeling like I just can't get it accomplished. Because, Lord, we're trying harder to bear the fruit when in reality we just need to be with you. We need to be with you. Lord, I pray as we are with you, the essence of who you are will begin to flow from our lives. The striving will cease. Because, Lord, it's all about being you. It's, Lord, the Word says it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being it's in you Lord I so want to be like you I so want to be like you Lord I so want your characteristics in my life I so want your personality in me I want your ways in me Lord, I pray that when people see me, they'll see a whole lot less of Jerry and they'll see a whole lot more of Jesus. But Lord, that can only happen as I remain in you. Father, I pray today for these friends of mine that have gathered together in this place. Lord, life is so busy. Life is so hectic. Life is so demanding of our time and our energy and our efforts that Lord we we come to the place where we get behind and it seems like life's so demanding Lord that there's not a lot of time that we're able to be with you and the longer that time goes Lord then it seems like now we're back to getting frustrated because now we're having to try to make the fruit happen Lord when really all we need to do is slow it down be with you 
Father, we have this time together today in your presence. And Father, for the next few minutes, we just want to be with you. And I pray, Father, for every person in this room. I know their desire, Lord, is that they desire to bear much fruit. Help us. Help us learn, Lord, to remain in you and abide with you, to be with you, so that we can lay the striving down and just naturally let the fruit of Jesus Christ flow through our lives. Father, I pray these things in Jesus' name and give you all the glory and the honor. In Christ's name. Here's how I'd like to close our time together today. I'd like to close in a time of prayer. You know, as, as we've uh, made transitions to two services, a lot of times we're, it seems like we're so pushed on a schedule that uh, we can easily get away from the things that have a lot of meaning. One of those things that has meaning is times of prayer. And today I want to close our service with just giving you some time for prayer. Uh, I'd like to open the altars, and what I mean by opening the altars is this place around the front, um, these steps, these front rows, is a great place to come and just find a place kneeling or standing or sitting um, and spend some time praying. If you want to, to do that in the seat where you are uh, seated this morning around the I just want to turn this place into a place of prayer this morning. And I'd like for us to make it our prayer. Lord, help me to learn to remain in you. Help me to learn to abide in you. And so this morning, I'd like for us to have prayer. And friends, whenever you feel the need to be dismissed, feel free to do so. And I just want to leave the, uh, this place as a place of prayer as long people want to uh, spend some time in prayer and so I encourage you to come with no agenda other than just spend some time with him talking to him being with him and letting him be inside of you father would you bless our time of prayer together would you bless as we take some steps this morning draw closer to you. I pray you'll bless that time in Christ's name. Amen and amen. These altars are open. Let's turn this place this morning into a place of prayer. Let's spend time in his presence. And as you leave today, friends, may the joy of the Lord, may it be your strength. Would you come and let's pray today and spend some time in his presence today.
is high.